morning. Today I am going to speak about palliative care in elderly. Faculty for this topic is Dr. Ruchira Trivedi. She is a medical officer in the Department of Palliative Medicine at Gujarat Cancer and Research Institute, Ahmedabad. Palliative care differs for geriatric patient from that of younger patients because, because of following reasons. Nature and duration of chronic illness during is very prevalent in old age. It is very important to maintain the functional status. Presence of discrete syndromes affecting older age, uh, adults like dementia, delirium, frailty and falls and physiological changes that occur with aging. The, these are the common factors which affect that the geriatric population and hence the care is very different than the adult population. And all this necessitates an approach which integrates fundamental principles of geriatric to model of palliative care so as to increase the quality of life as well as death of the patient. The goal of care in a geriatric population is very important. It is important to rethink of palliative care and goal setting in these uh, patients. Here the primary goal is to keep the chronic disease as stable as possible. Second, you have to maximize the function and quality of life. And third, you want these geriatric patients to remain functionally and socially connected as far as possible. Concept of care is uh, remaining open to all possibilities of old age and dying process will prevent our care of uh, elderly in this very important part of life becoming stereotyped and help carers face reality of their own mortality. We want to give them good life as well as good death which is also equally important. Here is one case scenario, A 89 years old man with moderate dementia, diabetes, peripheral vascular disease and coronary artery disease was admitted to hospital with gangrene of left foot resulting in sepsis. He then suffers a small myocardial infarction induced by rate related ischemia from his systemic infection. As a palliative care physician, what will you do? We will find, try to find answers in following slides. First of all, who will decide the goals of care in this patient? Goals of care must be decided by patient and their family, especially in chronic illness at every juncture of disease journey but they are to be provided with the option of palliative care as disease advances. Like in this case, you may advise amputation of the limb, but the decision will be made with the uh, consultation with the patient and family member, but you also keep palliative care in background as far as geriatric population is concerned. So, common issues in palliative care of elderly are physical issues, ethical issues, emotional issues and issues of caregiver. So, good palliative care can be provided either at home or at hospice. There are many physical issues commonly found in elderly population. First and foremost is dementia. It is an acquired decline in memory and in at least one additional intellectual ability. 
like uh, in language uh, aphasia, capacity to use tools, apraxia or recognize objects, agonasia and planning and thinking in abstract terms. Executive function in otherwise alert patient. So, impairment should be severe enough to interfere with daily living. So, physical issue is dementia. If the impairment of the function is severe and uh, with interfering with daily living, then this patient should be considered for the palliative care only. There is a difference between dementia and normal aging. As age advances, people are likely to forget many things, particularly names of the person, place, etcetera. But this forgetfulness is different from the dementia. How? In dementia, forgetting the name of the people close to them. And in normal aging, person will forget the names of the people whom they rarely see. Second, uh, in dementia, forgetting things more often than they used to. In normal aging, they will they may forget things briefly uh, as, as an experience. In uh, dementia, repeating phrases or stories in the same conversation. In same conversation, two, three lines or one or two stories they keep on repeating. In normal aging, not putting things away properly. In dementia, it will be unpredictable mood changes. In normal aging, mood changes in response to an appropriate cause. In dementia, there will be decreased interest in activities and difficulty making choice. In normal aging, there are changes in their interest. So, uh, if we go, go to the clinical characteristic of dementia, so there is a gradual loss of independence and this dementia stage is, it can be divided into four stages. Mild stage, there is a memory problem, spatial disorientation and some personality changes and they need assistant or reminders with basic activity of daily living. In moderate stage, language difficulty become uh, un, unable to use utensils, become confused, able to feed themselves if finger food is provided. In severe stage, there is a impaired comprehension. Living and resist when caregiver attempts to provide care. They, they do resist when caregiver attends them or supports them in many activities and there will be motor difficulties. In terminal stage of dementia, patient becomes mute, unable to have meaningful conversation, may not be able to maintain eye contact, unable to walk with even assistance, swallowing difficulties and there may aspirate the food or nasopharyngeal secretions. So, dementia can be a comorbidity in many aging population and other comorbidity can exist are neurological complications following Parkinson's disease, seizures, extrapyramidal system. It can be because of the intercurrent infection like urinary tract infection, upper respiratory tract infection, skin and subcutaneous tissue infection or because of malnutrition, because of decreased intake of food and increased expenditure and loss of muscle mass. So, palliative care approach to these patients, they have sun downing, increasing confusion at bedtime. So, they are more alert, little bit more alert in the morning hours and so this can be reduced by 
encouraging them to do daytime activities, daytime exercises and bedtime should be consistent and routine. You should not disturb their uh, timings and prevent daytime napping. One should control pain in these patients, encourage patient in participating in their own grooming and bathing and reduce their uh, uh, agitation, support them in all the daily activity, sponge bath and adjusting water temperature, uh, uh, encourage them to listen to their familiar music and get them engaged in social activities, treat the constipation whenever possible bed sore, prevent bed sore if they are lying continuously in the bed and dryness of mouth by encouraging more liquids, uh, uh, artificial saliva spread and mostly they required is good, kind and considerate nursing care. Medicine has got limited role to play, but what they need is a good nursing, individualized nursing care. In early stage of disease, you can give donazepine, rivastigmine, which uh, improves the behavior abnormality for few months only. And low dose of neuroleptics like amelio, uh, ameliorates halluc hallucination, confusion and delusion. And second generation of neuroleptics cause less extrapyramidal sympt symptoms. Still watch out for Parkinsonism. So, very limited role of medicine only in the initial stage. Second comorbidity many of the patient will have is delirium and how to differentiate delirium and dementia. Delirium is usually acute and dementia is a chronic process. Delirium often remitting and reversible many a times by correction of the hydration, electrolyte, nutrition. Dementia is all usually progressive and irreversible. Delirium is mental clouding. Here in dementia, there is a specific brain damage. In delirium, speech rambling and incoherent and here speech is stereotype and limited. Delirium is has got diurnal variation. Delirium usually occurs at more at a night and daytime patient is absolutely normal and dementia is continuous daytime also and night time also. In delirium often aware and anxious about their behavior and here patient is unaware about their behavior and they are not concerned about their behavior. So, management of delirium again explanation to the patient and caregiver, correct the correct table like hydration, electrolytes, nutrition, pain, uh, adjusting the doses of pain medication etcetera and many non-drug measures to be taken for uh, treatment of delirium like supporting. Uh, not allowing them to do sleep during daytime. At night time, keep the lights on and uh, minimum stimulation, etc. And few drugs can be given. Third important comorbidity you can say or uh, physical problem uh, aging population has is frailty. It is a unique syndrome in older individuals characterized as a progressive physiological process marked by declines in function and physiological reserve as well as increased vulnerability to morbidity and mortality. It is because of aging process the older individual becomes less uh, progressive uh, and less functions, slow movement and uh, very, uh, very susceptible to fall and all such thing. So, important in palliative care as it seem uh, commonly, but not recognized by many and lead to great 
deal of confusion and diagnosis testing for so many a times people uh, family and physician and even paramedics do not notice this frailty and that can lead to uh, many diagnostic testing and confusion the clinical feature of frailty are generalized weakness weight loss fatigue slowed performance and generalized state of low activity so gradual progressive uh, downward spiral in function and activity with decline in reserve and function leads to inability to recover from what is called minor illness and because of this frailty even from minor illness they do not recover very fast like if they get uh, cold cough or uh, vi common viral infection it takes long many time many days to recover so management of frailty is first of all very good control of pain nutrition supplement resistance exercise not very active exercise but uh, this is done by physiotherapist improving overall sense of well being through medical psycho psychological and social intervention overall well being by good hydration good nutrition getting them involved in activities uh, uh, talking to them and social intervention right physical therapy and occupational therapy has got a very big role to play in frailty sometimes massage and also uh, small small things therapies will help them continue their daily activity and get remain connected with the so social activity another physical problem elderly are likely to get are pressure sores or we call it bed sores this is usually found in the pe pe uh, people who are bed bound and poorly nourished and advanced stage of any disease uh, like uh, cancer or paraplegia or uh, cv stroke uh, etc here the prevention is better than cure and despite of proper nursing once developed it signals disease advancement and poor prognosis so one should do pain control and proper dressing of the bed sore and prevention of the mal odor and and that can improve the healing another physical uh, symptoms this elderly population is going to have likely to have is nausea and vomiting usually it is because of the drug reaction many a times because of of their small small physical problem they are put up in so put up on so many drugs that these drugs are likely to cause nausea vomiting or it may be because of constipation constipation is very common problem in elderly population so always whenever you treat any symptoms in elderly you start the medicine at very low dose and slowly increase the dose of the medicine constipation uh, common causes are female gender medication depression immobility chronic disease and diet low fiber diet less water intake etc one has to ch check for the fecal impaction and manual removal of the stool may be required and judicious use of laxative should be given here we can you can try um, naturopathy also and is uh, and one uh, many other ayurvedic preparation also again commonly found uh, other another symptom is diarrhea usually this diarrhea is because of overflow incontinence because of chronic constipation there is impaction of the stool and that stool remains there in the place and the newly formed stool passes around this stool and gives the feeling of incontinence 
or diarrhea. It may be because of infection, stress, malabsorption syndrome. Uh, the reversible cause in this uh, diarrhea should be treated first and appropriate antibiotic or uh, lopamide has a role to play. Another physical symptoms very common is uh, oral uh, symptoms because of lack of care, malnutrition, dehydration etcetera and many a time they have mouth ulcers which are painful, dryness of mouth and all this can go lead to halitosis that is bad breath. So, appropriate treatment of the cause maintain the oral hygiene and encourage them to take more liquids, sips of water, ice cubes or artificial saliva may be required. Dizziness is a again common symptom in elderly, multifactorial in origin, commonly it is because of the postural hypotension, decreased proprioception may be because of the vascular disease of the brain, vesticular uh, disease of the eighth nerve and uh, all or cardiac arrhythmia. Try to control it by non-drug measure and appropriate use of medicine particularly antihistaminic and reducing the fall by education of the patient and caregivers. Many a times as age advances, the patient under has severe malnutrition, unable to take anything by mouth. At that point of time, there is a role of artificial nutrition and hydration. But whether to go for this or not, this decision is to be taken in cons by con communication with the patient and caregiver and it is emotionally charged issue for many caregivers as they believe that patient will suffer from hunger without artificial nutrition and hydration. They feel that if patient is not eating, he will be suffering from by hunger and he will have malnutrition. So, they this type of caregiver and family members need to be informed that loss of appetite is normal in aging population and it may it may be a integral part of dying process so don't force them to eat or and you may not go for artificial nutrition and hydration coming to the point that in elderly population when to start medicine, when to stop medicine and how long to continue medicine. And when you are prescribing a medicine, you have to keep following th points in mind that they have multiple physical and psychological conditions. They have decreased kidney function and liver function. Then elderly people are sensitive to confusion as side effect of the medicine. Then multiple condition and multiple drug leads to drug interaction which is very common in this population. An irregular ingestion of the medicine due to lack of support from the family members or a caregiver. So, before prescribing any drug you have to keep these points in mind and then only you decide the uh, decide about giving the drug, which drug, what dose, how frequently etcetera. So, general ru rule is as few medicine to elderly population as possible. Start the medicine at very low dose and slowly increase the dose. Regularly you review the effect of this medicine and review the side effect if they at all which is produced by this medicine. 
and at any stage when you find that this medicine is not effective or producing more side effect, you cut down the medicine or reduce the dose of the medicine. For finally, most important is explain the medicine to the caregiver and family member. So, to increase uh, reinforce the compliance, do not rely on that patient, the elderly patient who is likely to forget or likely to take extra dose of medicine when he is not in his proper mood. So, so far we discuss about the physical problems in elderly, now we will discuss about the psychological issues in elderly. First and foremost is depression, depressive symptoms occur in older individuals so frequently that it is recognized as a geriatric syndrome. The cause of this depression may be multifactorial, it includes physical changes, neurological illness, changes in social support, they are so sensitive about their uh, home, about their family member, about their friends, about their surrounding. If there is a change in this type of support, then also they are likely to go in depression and economical resources as they relate to patients baseline coping skill and behavior. For diagnosis of depression in elderly, it is more helpful to screen for Psycho psychological symptoms like hopelessness, helplessness, guilt and suicidal ideation. So, you talk to patient and try to find out what makes them feeling depressed. Two item depression case finding instruments. During past month, have you often bothered by feeling down, depressed or hopeless? You ask this question to patient and during past month, have you often been bothered by little interest or pleasure in doing the things? Whether he is not taking interest in doing his uh, daily duty or uh, daily work, then this is a sign of depression. Treatment is multifactorial combining psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy and medication. And depression is different than sadness, we, one must keep in mind. Sadness may be temporary, but depression is a prolonged thing and can get worsened and must be addressed even in face of terminal illness. Second important psychological problem is anxiety. Being elderly and ill can provoke anxiety because they are concerned about the process of dying. They are all the time thinking now I am going to die, how it will be, when it will be, who will be there, what things I will suffer and all that. Second uh, concern is living dependent family and third concern is financial and housing matters and such anxiety can be a, uh, helped by open discussion with them rather than saying do not worry which will actually increase the anger. Just do not say do not worry everything will be alright, not like that. You try to explore the reasons, try to find out the solution and try to help them out. Caregivers of the elderly is a one another issue and it is very important. Caregivers of elderly also need as much or more attention from medical team as the patient. Most of these caregivers feel varying degree of exhaustion, guilty and frustration taking care of the elderly. So, listen to them and uh, address their concern and make them as comfortable as possible. This is in brief about the elderly population, their physical problem, psychological problem and caregivers issue. Thank you very much.